In this session, we are going to discuss about types of questions. The teaching learning process is guided by learning objectives. It is very essential that the learning material, teaching strategies and evaluation all are based and guided by the learning objectives. After teaching, it is imperative that the evaluation of the learners is done. Evaluation is checking or assessing whether the learners have achieved the learning objectives. Evaluation is the process of determining significance or worth of an individual or a program. As of now, we are going to concentrate on evaluation of a learner. Generally, from primary to up to undergraduate level, the learners are evaluated using tests. Tests comprises of different questions. In this session, we are going to discuss about different variety of questions that can be used for creating the test. There are certain guidelines or rules that need to be followed while creating a test. They are as follows. A test with more number of questions is always a better tool than fewer questions. Primarily because it gives a chance to the learner to exhibit the knowledge. Because with fewer questions, the learner does not get enough chance to exhibit the knowledge. The learners need to understand your expectations very clearly. That is the reason always form clear, precise and brief questions which communicate the expectations very clearly. Design the questions to test the knowledge and not to confuse the learner. There are majorly three types of questions. Objective type, short answer type and essay type. Objective type of questions are such questions for which the learner selects the answer from the given alternatives. Let's get into the details of objective type of questions. These are different variety of questions which are categorized under objective type. They are multiple choice questions, match the columns, true or false, fill in the blanks, sequencing, odd one out and label the diagram. On the screen you can see a typical multiple choice question. Mostly they are called MCQs. You will notice that it has a stem and it has a number of options. The question is called a stem and the alternatives which are given down are either called as options or alternatives. These MCQs can be of different types. In this question you must have noticed that the alternatives are very close to each other. They are all the names of either freedom fighters or dignitaries who were very active in the freedom struggle at that time. Multiple choice questions can be formulated in different ways. This is one of the categories. Let's see that. This is sentence completion type. You will see that the sentence is framed in such a way that the learner needs to select a word or a phrase in order to complete the sentence. Even over here, you will notice that the options are very close to each other such that answering the questions becomes a little challenging task for the learner. Multiple choice question can also be created into an analogous type. Here is an example of that. In this type of question, the learner deduces or identifies a relationship between the two given words based on which she or he will predict the word of the given relationship. In this example, you can notice that the learner will try to identify the relationship between desert and cactus, which is the habitat and the plant which exists in that habitat. On the basis of this relationship, the learner will predict the relationship between water and what next. If you see the alternatives given below, hyacinth is the only answer to that question. Now you also need to notice that the other alternatives which are given over here are also plants but definitely existing in other habitats than water. Now on the screen you are seeing another type of multiple choice question. But until now we had seen multiple choice questions where only one answer was correct. Whereas over here more than one answers are correct. You can notice that in the first example the learner can be allowed to select the options or tick mark on the correct answers. This is another way in which a multiple choice question could be given. Here the Roman 1, 2, 3 and 4 are the alternatives whereas A, B, C, D is used to give the combination of the possible correct answers. The alternatives A, B, C, D can be used wherever possibly there could be more than one answers which are correct. It is assumed 
that multiple choice question being an objective type of question could be very simple and could only test a mere recall of the learner, which is not so. You can design multiple choice questions which are at a higher thinking order level. Obviously, formulating these questions is a little challenging for the person who is setting the test paper. Also, understanding the meaning of that question, deciding what is the possible answer of that question because it invokes a lot of thinking and also uh, makes a learner to do critical thinking and problem based thinking because of such things, answering to such questions becomes a little challenging and difficult for the learner. So, you can definitely put in questions which demand higher order thinking of the learners, but you must include fewer questions in your test because it consumes more time than expected. Here are a few guidelines for designing questions at higher order thinking level. They are use a chart or figure or a table or detailed information in the stem. You can design a number of MCQs based on this stem that is a single stem. You can also give a scenario which is based on real life situation in the stem and then give alternatives which are possible answers of the scenario. You need to take care that there is only one correct answer but the rest aren't obviously wrong. Let us see an example which is based on higher order thinking skills. Mr. Abhay is a history teacher of class 6. He wanted to teach about historical monuments of India. He wanted to assign work to students such that they learn in groups. Which strategy would be most appropriate one? The alternatives are as follows. Option A, the children will bring pictures of historical monuments from home which they will stick on a chart paper. Using that chart, the teacher will then teach about each monument. Option B is, the teacher will prepare a beautiful chart of historical monuments with their information. The students will observe that chart in groups. They will explain the information written on that chart in groups. Option C is, the teacher will assign different geographical regions of India to the groups of students. The students will collect information and pictures of those monuments in that region. They will then prepare different charts and models. They will make group presentations to their class about the information they have collected. And the last option D is, the teacher will explain about many historical monuments in class. Then he will ask the students to collect pictures and more information about those as well as other historical monuments. The children will then collect that information and make a scrapbook. You must have noticed that the scenario was worded very simply. And the scenario invoked thinking into the learners minds. The answer was not simple. The learners had to understand each of the alternative, then try to compare it with the stem, identify what are the requirements given in the stem and then try to match it with the correct alternative. You must have realized that the correct alternative is C which involved teacher assigning group projects, students collecting that information on their own and then making group presentations in the class. Here, the teacher was not involved much, he was just facilitating the group work. These kind of questions which need a lot of thinking, which involves a lot of thinking, cannot be answered on rote learning alone. So these kind of questions actually test the understanding of the learner of that topic. While designing multiple choice questions, we need to follow some guidelines. Here are they. Present the stem with clear, unambiguous language without any trivial details. Do not give obviously right or wrong answers as options. Do not give any clues in the question. Keep the length of the options similar because generally the long option is the one which is correct. Give minimum 3 and maximum 5 alternatives. Do not give less than 3 or do not give more than 5 as it becomes cumbersome for the learner to understand and then mark out the answers. Avoid giving grammatical clues such as A, and R, etc. The next type of question is match the columns. I am sure all of you are familiar with this type of a question. Even match the columns should be designed such that it checks the understanding of the learner and the learner is not able to answer that question on mere recall. For designing match the column type of a question, generally you need to take a large chunk of information which has 
different categories based on which you can design questions. Examples over here could be learning disabilities and their symptoms, cooperative learning strategies and their points of differentiations, vitamins and their functions or vitamins and their deficiency diseases. Such kind of content lends itself to lot of categories based on which you can design a match the column type of a question. On the screen, you are able to see a match the column type of a question where the vitamins are matched or are to be matched with the functions of those vitamins. You will notice that the columns are identified very clearly as vitamins and functions. Over here, these pairs are matched for your convenience, but when you are designing this question and putting it in the test, obviously the alternatives or the functions need to be shuffled so that it becomes challenging for the learner. You will also notice that the number of alternatives or functions are not equal to the number of vitamins. You need to give at least one or two more alternatives so that the learner does not get the correct answer based on mere elimination of the alternatives. While designing match the column type of a question, we need to follow certain guidelines. They are as follows. Give clear instructions about the basis for matching. For example, match the vitamins with its functions. You have just seen that example now. Use items that share the same basis of information. Unrelated topics will have obvious options for matching, hence reducing the difficulty level and challenge for the learners. For example, in the previous example that you have seen, we tried to match the vitamins with its functions. Here, instead of functions, if the distractor is something like deficiency disease, then obviously that gets discarded because it does not match with the alternative which is given over there. Such instances should not take place when you are designing a match the column type of a question. Always include one or two more responses than the number of stems. This does not give an opportunity to get the correct answer by elimination. This also you have seen in the previous question where we had five items to be matched whereas on the right hand side the options that were given was one more option was given for the learners to match. Now let us see the next type of a question which is true or false. Generally it is believed that true or false type of a question is used to uh, test knowledge uh, level question or it can test only mere recall of the learner. It is not so. You can even design true or false questions which are at a little higher level. That is transfer based learning objectives can be used for uh, designing these kind of questions. Here are some examples of that. Let's take a look at that. Earth is the only planet in the solar system that has been known to have life on it. Second statement is that in a 50 mark test of educational psychology, Preeti got 30 marks that is she got 60% in that test. Third statement is that it is important to follow a standard template for designing session plan. It can be seen that the statement 1 is testing the knowledge of facts of the learner where the learner is asked about whether earth has life or no. Whereas statement 2 and 3 are checking whether the learner has applied the knowledge that he knows and whether the learner has understood the topic very well or no. In this way we can design true or false questions which are set at a little higher level and not based on mere recall. Let us see what are the guidelines to be followed for designing true or false type of questions. Avoid using double negative statements. They take extra time to decipher. For example, use of complementary colors in a presentation is not undesirable. Not and undesirable. There are two negative words used over here which actually means positive. But this could be confusing to the learner. Remember we had discussed that don't confuse a learner, test their knowledge. This is confusing the learner. So a statement which has two negative words should not be used. True or false type of questions can be used for testing misconceptions. Keep approximately same number of true and false statements. It is good to have that balance of equal number of positive and negative statements. At the same time try and arrange that the answers are not following a pattern. If they don't follow some, some pattern like true, true, false, false, true or true, false, true, false, true, false. These are some patterns that generally the students get randomly without thinking much. 
So try and avoid if the answers are following any pattern that should be tried and avoided. And last but not the least, do not take statements straight from the text. The next type of objective type of a question is fill in the blanks. It is the most favorite of most of the teachers. Let us see how a typical fill in the blank type of a statement looks like. Removal of fleece from the body of a sheep is called dash. Here the learner will recall an answer shearing. What you saw just now was a typical way in which a fill in the blank type of a question is asked. Fill in the blank type of a question can have different forms. Let us go ahead and see that. Here the question is select the correct word from the bracket. These type of questions are very useful to test the language of the learners. Let's look at the statements now. Removal of fleece from the body of sheep is called dash. Now here you will see that shearing and fleecing these are the two words which are given in the bracket. Now learner is supposed to select one of the answers. Now here the correct answer is shearing of course but fleecing is a distractor over here which will mislead the learner if the learner does not know that the process is called shearing probably the learner will select fleecing which is an incorrect answer. The next three statements that you are seeing are actually testing the knowledge of the learner about the spellings and the grammar. Let us see those statements. This is the boy into bracket which who that broke his leg while playing football. Now while designing such questions you also need to see whether it rhymes correctly. Obviously only one answer is going to be correct but the other distractors which you are giving should rhyme correct or they should seem correct to the learner which causes enough distraction to the learner. Somebody or anybody has stolen my pen. Now here of course the correct answer is somebody has stolen my pen. But somebody and anybody almost mean the same. But of course they have a different repercussions based on the remaining part of the statement. The third one is we saw a herd or herd of elephants in the forest. Now here the learner's knowledge of spelling is checked over here because herd and herd both phonetically sound the same or the sound of those two words is the same. So here the learner needs to know what is the correct spelling of the herd of elephants which is H-E-R-D. The next form of fill in the blank type of a question is close passage. The spelling is C-L-O-Z-E, it's not misspelled here. This form is usually used for testing language skills but this can be created for any other subject as well. Let us see two examples of close passage now. The first close passage checks the learner's knowledge of language, English language. Whereas the second passage tests the knowledge of geography of the learner. Go ahead and read these examples. We need to observe some guidelines or rules while designing fill in the blank type of questions. They are as follows. Ensure that the blank has only one correct answer. Let's see an example here. Vomiting is a major symptom of and there is a blank. Now if you think about this statement, vomiting can be a symptom of several different things such as acidity, indigestion, motion sickness, morning sickness allergy to milk, overeating, blocked intestines and so many more. Which out of these is going to be the correct answer which the learner has to write here? So whenever you are designing a statement for fill in the blank, it needs to be clear. It needs to give the idea to the learner about which is the correct answer to be filled over there. The next guideline is the number of blanks in the question needs to be equal to the marks awarded to the whole question. That is, in an entire question of fill in the blank, you could have five statements which have five blanks to be filled. You can award five marks to the learner if all the answers are correct. But you cannot have one statement having two blanks and rest of the statements having one blanks. In case if you need to do that, then the number of marks which are awarded 
to that question need to be equal to the number of blanks which the learner is going to fill in that question. So whenever you need to decide the marks for fill in the blank type of a question, check the number of blanks that the learner has to fill in. The next guideline is while drawing the lines for blanks, they need to be of same length, avoiding any kind of clues for the length of the answer. The next type of our objective question is sequencing. In this, the learner has given certain events or certain uh, steps of a procedure which the learner puts in a certain sequence. This type of a question is ideal to be created for content such as chronological order of historical events or procedure of any experiment or procedures of any model of teaching such as concept attainment model or Ganesh 9 events of instruction etc. Let us see an example now. Arrange the following events in their chronological order. A. Mughal Empire founded by Babur. B. Humayun ascends throne. C. Battle of Kanoj. D. Death of Sher Khan. E. Humayun restores Mughal rule. F. Akbar ascends the throne. The learner can take a look at these events and put them in a chronological order. We need to keep in mind that we should not give too many events over here. Maybe 5 to 7 events are fine to be included in sequence type of a question but may not be more because it leads to confusion to the learner and it becomes too much of information at one time to the learner to manage. At the same time, do not give long statements over here because longer statements take longer time to understand. So 5 to 6 long statements to understand put them in a sequence becomes very challenging for the learner. The next objective type of a question is odd one out. Here the learner is given 4 to 5 examples out of which only one is odd. That is the reason the name of the question is odd one out. Only one is odd out of the rest of the examples which are given to the learner. On the screen you are able to see one such example. You can notice the odd word over here. Even for designing odd one out type of questions, we need to follow certain guidelines. Let us see these guidelines now. In a set, include about 3 to 5 options, not more than that. All the alternatives except only one should fall in that category. And that category should be clearly evident to the learner. There should be no ambiguity. It should be challenging enough for the learner. It should not be so easy that the learner does not face any challenge for selecting the odd one. The next type of objective type of a question is label the diagram. We are quite familiar with this type of a question. While creating a label the diagram type of a question, we need to ensure that the marks allocated to this question are equal to the number of labels that the learners would be giving. We finished discussing objective type of questions. Now let us come to the short answer type of a question and essay type of questions. These two questions are the ones which need the learner to write the answers. Whereas objectives were the ones where the learner had to select the correct answer. Now let us go ahead and see the short answer type of questions. In short answer type of questions, the questions are framed in such a way which needs the learner to give the answer in one or two sentences. The learner is expected to spend around 1 to 2 minutes to write one answer of this question and accordingly around 1 to 2 marks are allocated to this kind of a question. Let us see some examples of short answer type of question. Define the term pollution. What is the atomic weight of a certain element? Give two examples of biodegradable fabrics. Questions like these which don't need much elaboration of the answers are feature under short answer type of questions. Now let us go ahead and see the essay type of questions. The learner gives an answer in about 3 to 4 sentences or maybe more sentences while giving the answer to this question. The learner is expected to spend around 10 to 15 minutes while writing the answer of this question. Accordingly, even the marks which are allocated to each of the question is around uh, 10 to 15 marks are allocated to each question. Essay type of questions can be very effectively used to evaluate the understanding of the learner. 
even when we go to higher uh, level of learning objectives checking the achievement of those learning objectives like evaluation whether the learner is able to evaluate or no whether the learner needs to create some sample and present it such kind of questions can be framed only in essay type of questions the main advantage of essay type of items is that they permit students to demonstrate achievement of higher level objectives such as analyzing critical thinking creating some new products it gives learners the opportunity to use their own judgment writing styles vocabulary the items need to be created such that it provides such opportunities to the learner and not base them merely on knowledge level this can be achieved using essay type of questions only let us see some examples of essay type of questions how does water pollution affect us here the learner needs to think about different ways in which water pollution affects us it may have been previously included in their instructional material or may not be included in their instructional material the next question is differentiate between boiling point and melting point the third question is an atom x has mass number 27 and atomic number 13 what is its electronic configuration now to answer this question the learner may have learnt about different orbits in which the electrons are allocated but if the element is not given to the learner but only the mass number and the atomic number is given to the learner so here the learner will need to decide which is a number which represents a number of electrons and accordingly the learner will need to draw the number of shells and allocate the different electrons into those respective orbits this invites lot of thinking on the learner's part so this kind of question can be only asked in essay type of a question let us see the next question read the given story from mahabharata and write a character sketch of arjuna the next question is what is your opinion about the status of modern women in india give your opinion in about 200 words now think about this question this question is asking the learner to think about the status of a modern woman in india this kind of information is generally not given in any textbooks so the learner needs to be well read he or she needs to be well informed about what is happening in the society only if the learner knows that he or she be able to write a small answer of around 200 words for of this question of course these kind of questions should not be too many in any test because in case if the learner does not know the answer to this question or if the learner is not able to justify the answer of this question very well they lose all the marks for this question maybe in the entire test one or two such questions could be asked in the test now thinking about short answer questions and essay type of questions usually this question arises in the paper setter's mind how many questions to be put in or how many short answer type of questions to be asked how many essay type of questions to be asked and how many objective type of questions to be asked if more number of short questions are added into the test it will give you a better judgment about the learner you will be able to assess the learner in a much better way because there would be a variety of content on to which you can base such questions a test paper should have a very good mix of specially essay type and short answer type of questions because those questions are the one which allows the learner or it gives an opportunity to the learner to exhibit their knowledge and also to exhibit their capabilities with respect to cognitive abilities and the knowledge let us see some guidelines for short answer type of questions as well as essay type of questions many a times we find that the test papers they have questions which are very lengthy which demand a very lengthy answer even the marks allocated to such questions are very high they are around 15 to 20 marks questions now such questions when you design generally the questions tend to be little vague because they are demanding a very large answer which goes up to around 5 to 6 pages it is not a good practice to give such questions in the test papers the reason being if the learner does not know the answer to this question then the learner does not want to lose those 15 to 20 marks then they get into the practice of writing some nonsensical text writing such answers definitely is a challenge for the learners but checking that answer is a greater challenge for the teacher 
if the test paper contains such questions and around 4 to 5 questions are there in the test paper, then it becomes very challenging for the teacher also to check such questions because after a certain number of papers, fatigue sets in and it becomes very difficult for the teacher to give that much of attention to every test paper. To avoid all such things, it is always a good practice to include more short answer questions as compared to essay type of questions. Ideally, the test paper should have around 40% questions which are objective type of questions and around 60% questions which are short answer and essay type of question. That too, there should be more number of short answer questions as compared to essay type of questions. But of course, this proportion could be reversed also, meaning in a test paper, there could be 60% questions which are objective type, whereas 40% questions which are short answer and essay type of questions. With this, we come to the end of our session on types of questions.